Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Exploring Attractions. My name is Scott. And I'm Savannah. And we're here at Disneyland. There's a couple things we want to do. Obviously, there's a very obvious Magic Key discussion. Yeah. Because uh, we have no idea what's going on with that. Halloween preparations. It's spooky season. Savannah was just telling me today how <laughs> it's crazy how it's just like, what, all of August? That turns Halloween time. There's lots going on. Lots of stuff to talk about. Lots of stuff to discuss. Let's just go hop into the park. And that's right, everyone. I mentioned the Halloween season. And that's because on September 2nd, in a few weeks or so, they will be kicking off things here with all the spooky festivities at Disneyland and California Adventure. And as most of you may know, Halloween season is my favorite season of the year. Now soon there will be a Halloween fireworks show that goes here. It's Halloween Screams. One of the cooler fireworks shows. I mean, they're all great, but I just love the Halloween one because you get to see parts of a Jack Skellington in it. And who doesn't love Jack Skellington? In a quick turn of events, we're going to make our way over to DCA since it is park hopping time. I want to stop over by the ticket booths and kind of touch up on Magic Key and the future of, you know, pass holders and whatnot. And then we can see if there's any Oogie Boogie Bash construction in California Adventure right now. I think it's a little bit early, but we'll see. And I remember on August 25th of last year when Magic Keys first were sold, the line here was crazy. Now, obviously, it's not as crazy. It's still long of a line, but even though they told everybody that they weren't going to be selling them in person, there were still crazy amounts of lines. And that's why I think that it's quite interesting that the mass amount of people who are Magic Key holders are the ones who bought them on August 25th. Sure, there was people who bought them uh, after that, after the it was a lot easier to get them and you had to wait in a virtual queue. The passes are, are going to be expiring on August 25th. That begs the question, how busy will the parks be? Um, will there be a, an abundance of reservations? Because there already is. There already is plenty of reservations available. Well, honestly, I think that Disney doesn't even have these, the answers to these questions themselves. I think they're still wondering on what they're going to do. Now, honestly, what I feel like will happen is they'll get to August 25th and we won't have Magic Keys. There won't be any pass holder system. I think that Disney's developing a new sort of system. Could still fall under the same name, but I, I do not think that we'll be able to purchase the Magic Keys on August 25th or, or renew our current one. Which personally, I feel like Disney's gonna take a big hit as far as people coming into the park, how much revenue they're making. Uh, a lot of Disneyland's population is pass holders. Let's just say pass holders, it's kind of weird to say key holders, is pass holders. So uh, I don't know, it, it's, it'd be odd for Disney not to have a system going for annual passes especially considering the fact that their capacity is near 100%. I don't know if it's exactly 100%, but there's no more capacity restrictions, obviously mask drop and whatnot. So yeah, I, I think that if Disney was smart, which they are, they're business, a uh, multi-billion dollar of business, um, they would have some system forming already and they would already release details. But there's also the reality of they could just not be having a system like this at all. What do you think about the Magic Keys? Do you think they'll return in what context? Like what, what will happen? Because I'm still lost here. Um, I think they'll come back, probably for more expensive. They won't add anything to it though. Um, but I think they'll probably bring it back like the week before they're supposed to expire and give people like less of a window to try to like not have as many people renew. Do you think that they'll sell like less though compared to like, cause they quote unquote sold out like last year. Well, I think they're not going to like open up for new like buying windows. You think it'll just be all renewal? Yeah. That would be interesting because I feel like the majority of people, like they, like I said, uh, when I was talking right now, the majority of people at Disneyland are pass holders. Do you think that they already all like former pass holders are now into magic key holders? Do you think they all have magic keys or do you think there's some that still haven't bought it because the system is so rigged? No, I definitely think there's people that didn't get the chance, probably thinking I could get one later or whatever, and then they you couldn't get one. So I definitely think there's people who used to be pass holders who are trying to, hoping to get one this round, but I think it's gonna be like the week before, they're gonna have renewals, and you have one week to renew. If you don't, then you don't. And then they'll open up to like new ones after they see how many people renew. Popped into the world of Disney, and we already knew they were, you know, releasing a whole bunch of Stitch merch as they released those cool button-up shirts, with that same design on a pillow and whatnot, like a lawn pillow. But it seems like they've added a whole bunch more. I'm loving the Stitch representation here. You know, Lilo and Stitch is my favorite movie and Stitch is just an awesome Disney character. Like this striped shirt with like a Stitch kind of in the shadows of it and then him on the side. This is new to us. How much is that one? It, sh it should have been a pocket, you're right. Savannah's gonna get the price right now. 
37 dollars or $36.99? $36.99. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. And you can get yourself a striped yeah. stitch shirt. Anything on the back? That's another back. And then they have these shorts. They're just like striped shorts with a little stitch logo. They're pretty cute. They have back pockets too, and it's the same price as a shirt for 37 bucks. These are probably top 10 prettiest ears I've ever seen. They're lounge fly, but they're expensive. I didn't even realize they're lounge fly. Yeah. So they're a little bit more pricey than like your typical ears. These ones are $40 instead of 30. Yeah, merch is exciting and whatnot, but the most exciting update today that I've seen is there's no more one entry, one exit. Uh, here at the world of disney you can go in both doors and i didn't know that for the longest time it was one way in one way out and it was a little bit difficult especially if you just wanted to stop in a world of disney real quick we had to go all the way around and then walk back to the parks but now you can just you know walk in and out the same door that you came in looks like there's some work going on out here in front of the grizzly peak sign uh, right behind this is typically where they had the plane at and pluto's meeting and greeting but there's some construction walls up i can see the plane through the cracks in there Looks like nothing's been changed. But the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail is currently closed for some improvements, but those improvements being, of course, them getting it prepared for Villains Grove. Now, Villains Grove is an immersive walkthrough experience with tons of cool lighting and special effects. It kind of gives you that, like, haunting, spooky feel that other much more mature haunt events would do, which is awesome for Oogie Boogie Bash. This is definitely one of my favorite things to do. I missed out on it last year since we weren't able to get tickets for last year's event. However, we will be here for this year's event, like the first week. Oogie Boogie Bash kicks off in, in a little bit over a month, right around the same time that the D23 Expo is happening across the street. But Villains Grove, 10 out of 10. If you are planning to come to Oogie Boogie Bash, you have to check this out. And it'll get busy, but it's constantly moving, like people are walking through it, so there won't be too long of a line. But definitely a must hit for Oogie Boogie Bash. You can spin at least 45 minutes to an hour in here just enjoying everything. You know, as I'm thinking about it a lot more, speaking on the whole Magic Key thing, today it's an extremely busy day. Like the wait for a Little Mermaid was uh, past the normal queue and they even had the extended queue already out towards the end of the building, which is just an insane queue. You never see that for Little Mermaid. The park is packed. There's places like Jumpin' Jellyfish that the entire queue is full, but I can still go on my phone right now and make a reservation for Magic Key, theme park tickets, hotel guests, everything. So that begs the question, like like I said, when Magic Keys are eliminated, or just pass holders in general, how busy are the parks going to be? Like, it's just, that oh man, seeing it now in person on a busy summer day like this, really like uh, puts these thoughts in my head. And I love that. If you're smiling, that means you're celebrating. And I think it maybe you're celebrating some fun, like a birthday or an anniversary. Would it be a Disney day without Radiator Springs racers being broken down at least once? No, no, no. Let me just say, it breaks down at least twice every day. Especially it's on a busy day. This queue can hold a lot of people. But it's down right now. At least the cars aren't smoking like they were for like a whole week. Cars Land, of course, will be getting the Halloween treatment very, very soon. I'd say in a couple weeks or so. And this place looks absolutely beautiful at night. It does in the holidays, but honestly, I would say Cars Land Halloween time over the holidays. And that's just my opinion. It's a lot more spookier. There's some special effects in the firehouse. Everything about Cars Land during Halloween time is awesome. But would you say it's your favorite part of the Halloween time here or something else? No, this is probably the best. And Rollick and Roadsters will be transformed into the Halloween overlay very soon as well. This ride's actually currently down too on top of Radiator Springs Racers. I guess everything in Cars Land is just broken right now. But, you know, we mentioned last time we were here that there's an Enterprise sponsor at the end of this ride. They also have it right there in the corner, presented by Enterprise. New sponsor for Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters. I just want to know when this shop will ever reopen. This closed down, obviously, during 2020 and whatnot, but it has never reopened since then. It's just a generic little shop. It's not a whole bunch of merch in there, but it is nice to walk in for some AC and look around. It's also extremely good thing. But yeah, no word on this, and I don't think he'll open anytime soon. I think it'll be one of those like surprise things that just happens randomly. Over here in the former queue of Hyperion Theater, or I mean it still technically is if they have shows here, but where the Frozen show used to be at, this is typically where the Mad Hatter immersive tree trails at. And around this time I remember I was watching back my Magic Key vlog from like opening day of Magic Keys, August 25th. There was actually the Mad Hatter stage already up 
guess we're a little bit too early because there's nothing here quite yet, but it's really just a little stage that they pop in there in preparation for that immersive treat show. This is definitely one of my favorites just because the Mad Hatter is able to talk to, as they all are, but the Mad Hatter, who doesn't love the Mad Hatter? He just like screams Halloween while also still sticking to the Disney feel. Or maybe, just maybe, they could utilize the Hyperion Theater, and I'm talking about the inside for new characters. There'd be plenty of stuff that they can do in there with different lighting effects and whatnot. Now, I don't think Disney would do something like that, but the opportunity is there. It'll also be a little bit difficult to like rip out the seats. I guess they could do it on the stage, but really, why would they have guests to walk up a stage just to get some candy? Or they could have them above the stage, like whatever the character is. That'd be neat. I'm just, you know, brainstorming here. Having the red car trolley back just brings so much more like liveliness to this park. And it moves pretty fast too. Here we go. Cruising around. Oh yeah. So happy to have it back. We found these ears in the shop across from Elias and Co. And I haven't seen these anywhere in the park yet. So they're pretty new. And I just love all the purple representation going on with all these new ears. They're so cute. As we were talking about all the Magic Key stuff today, it looks like Cole McCarthy on Twitter put out this post saying that he'd chatted with someone from guest services on the Disneyland app. And it states right here that they will be offering Magic Key renewals just at a later date and you'll be able to upgrade into several different uh, pass options. Not upgrade, but renew into several different pass options. So that kind of confirms the fact that, well number one, you'll be able to renew them. But number two, the fact that it could be a new system. There could be different keys, there could be, it could be a completely different name. Is that what I'm, that's what I'm getting here from this post. So. It's exciting stuff nonetheless, no more speculation. We just have to wait for Disney to start talking about it themselves. And they said that they will share details in the near future. All right, Dylan, so there's obviously a big question on Magic Key. I asked Savannah, I talked about it myself, so I wanna know your thoughts on it. Just a quick, with no context, thoughts on Magic Key. I am, I'm just very curious. I feel like as much as the community is because they haven't said anything as far as renewals or if there's gonna be changes to the program. I have a feeling that they're gonna make some changes. I know for a fact there's gonna be a price increase because it seems like they increase the price every single year. But what I was just talking about in uh, my video is I just hope that they have a win-win scenario, a win-win for the company and for the consumer because I feel like we don't have enough perks when you compare other annual passes at other theme park companies. You know, Knott's Berry Farm offers a great pass, Six Flags offers a great pass, and Universal Studios offers a great pass. So I hope that Disney can learn from other people and incorporate some nice perks and incentives for us here at Disney. You know, oddly enough, when I was talking about it in a little spin-off video that I did, I was saying like, it is interesting comparing it to other parks because they want to seem like affordable. Even though Disney's not affordable, we all know it's not, it's expensive. Yeah. They want to fit in at least with the competing theme parks as much as possible. Um, and you know, I, I don't doubt that there's a price increase, but also when they did release Magic Keys last year, all of us thought they were going to be extremely expensive and they turned out to be the same. Yeah. And you know, I feel like the Disney community needs to like just wake up and realize that there are other theme parks out there that offer a really good product. And as far as the annual pass program is concerned, and I, the whole notion that everything's fine, it, I mean, I feel like the community needs to realize that some things are not fine. And I, we, we need some changes. We need some good changes. I feel like something that I haven't really talked a whole lot about in our most recent visits is the downtown Disney progress. And that's because there is none. It's currently just a pile of dirt. It's not even a pile, it's all flattened out completely. Nothing there, nothing left. Ever since the demolition of AMC theaters and everything else, it's just sat there. And I was predicting before that that would probably be done in 2023, or at least at the end of it, or at the end of 2022. I'm thinking more so um, springtime of 2023, at least for that phase of it, so. I figured even though, like I said, there's no big progress on it, I come back here to come check it out and see if there's anything that we're missing, but no, it's still the same still completely flat with these colorful walls and yeah this is exactly what it's looked like since the demolition since we're actually see, able to see the structures going down you'd think if they're getting closer and closer to this being complete which obviously they're super far away they put some form of rendering on these construction walls exciting guess of like what's to expect yeah you can even tell way back here by the downtown disney stage 
that you can't see anything at all. Now on the right side, it looks like there's marketing for the Ultimate Princess Celebration, which has nothing to do with the Downtown Disney expansion. But other than that, there's no concept art, no promotion, no anything for the Downtown Disney refurbishment slash expansion slash everything else. So weirdly enough, all day long, or at least since we got here, we've been trying to ride Nemo, a uh, submarine voyage, and so we have not ridden it since it's reopening. But it's been closed, and so has the monorail. There's been a sign that says monorail is currently unavailable, and of course on the app, it's been closed all day. So I'm thinking, is there like a uh, a power issue over there, or like what is it? It's just really interesting that both those two attractions are closed, and they have been closed for the last few hours or so. Finally made it back over into Disneyland, and it looks like this foliage area has kind of been growing a little bit since the last time we checked it out. Um, and like I said, it's definitely not going to look like the console bar that we're all expecting unless they were to put some protective spray over it that makes it look different colors, but looks like these are the colors it's going to have and then we'll see what design they put around it to kind of fit the Tomorrowland theme. Oh, Tomorrowland, all will soon be revealed as to what the future of it is because D23 is rapidly approaching literally within a month and uh, yeah, the rumors are that we're going to find some information about Tomorrowland during that panel on Sunday. The Disney Parks and Experience panels on Sunday. But also those rumors can all be completely false. You know, there's been tons of rumors that have been debunked by Disney. So I don't want to get my hopes up too, too soon until we actually hear something because Tomorrowland is something that like, if there's some fake concept art that goes out and then it turns out to be fake, then uh, my heart would be broken. But right now they're all just rumors so Counting on the days to see if we actually find something out at the uh, Parks and Experience panel. And as we made our way back into Disneyland, it seems as if Finding Nemo is still down, as well as the monorail. Now, they did just send the monorail to test, but there's still cast members in front of it, you know, telling guests it's not open. And in a shocking turn of events, it looks like Nemo is also testing. Right after I said that the monorail is testing too, they got two subs going through the track, and it looks like cast members are actively working in the station right now. So. It's not open quite yet, but they are testing it and they haven't been doing that all day. And it's pretty funny because you can actually see the waterfall's not on right now, so you can kind of see into the show building right there as it uh, goes in. It looks a lot different with the submarine not going into a waterfall. No, oh, that's just kind of a neat thing. That's something I have never seen before. Came back here into the Toontown area of the park, and I feel like this construction project is, is hauling like extremely fast. You can see if you stand far enough back, the uh, actual mountains are being painted right now. You know, the mountains that are supposed to immerse you in Toontown that are much taller now. And see there's actual like, what appears to be scrim. Um, just, I, I don't know, not covered scrim. I'm not, I'm, I'm, someone put this in construction terms for me. And as of right now, and as of for a while now, there's still no update on the treehouse. This will probably be a D23 thing as well, where they announce what the theme is of this or what the future of this is. Yeah, it looks relatively the same. Like there has been nothing changed at all other than that first notable one where they took out the actual entrance and cleared a lot more room. Well, sorry that this vlog is kind of all over the place, but we transitioned into nighttime. Three hours later, the ride is still closed here over by Nemo. I really don't know what the issue was today considering the fact that Nemo, or, uh, the monorail was also closed all day. Like I said, I feel like it's just a power issue. Well, everyone, that's going to do it for our day here at the Disneyland Resort. It kind of, like I said, the vlog was a little bit all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed the updates and whatnot. We kind of just had fun after, like, we filmed everything, so that's why I was kind of, like, switched from the daytime right to the nighttime. But if you're new here, make sure to subscribe with those bell notifications on. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, and as always, check out our social media on Instagram and on Twitter at Exploring Attractions. My name is Scott, and you've been watching Exploring Attractions. Positivity is key, and most importantly, remember to keep exploring. Peace out, everybody.